Welcome to another episode of What is Hashimoto's with Dr. Martin Rutherford. To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com. And now, here's Dr. Rutherford. Okay, so the question we're getting lately is, you keep talking about these 39 triggers, what are they? So then, and the, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the thinking there is if I just know what those 39 triggers are, I'm gonna be able to take care of myself. So that may or may not be true. <laughs> it's for the, uh, just for record, I know what the 39 triggers are and I have to do a lot of work to figure out how to get, uh, how to help people to get where they wanna get with these 39 triggers. But we're going to reveal the 39 triggers. So what's a trigger? Okay. So, so, so the triggers we're going to reveal, and, 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 and listen, full disclosure, this, comes, not, this from, comes from above. This comes from the people who are doing research on this. Um, the chart I'm going to show you comes specifically from a seminar that I went to with a Dr. Deeptis Karazian, who apparently is becoming more and more popular online, as he should be. Okay. Uh, he's, uh, but... Uh, the, these 39 triggers are dripped to us over a period of like three days with uh, a lot of explanation to each subsequent one. So trigger is basically this, you have an autoimmune problem, okay? Meaning your immune system has become sensitized to certain tissues in your body. So if it's, uh, so if it's your thyroid, obviously, it's your thyroid that's getting attacked. If it's rheumatoid arthritis, it's your joints and, and so on and so forth. So, so, the, the, so the medical, approach to the triggers is nothing. <laughs> the, the medical approach is, is to crush the immune system. All right, basically to give you uh, immune suppressants, things that bring your immune system down, which stops them from flaring up when you expose yourself to these triggers and stops you from flaring up and then stops that attack um, on your tissues. The problem with that approach is you don't wanna have your immune system suppressed for long periods of time you start getting colds and flus and viruses and infections, then you start not being able to get over them and, and things of that nature. So, so triggers have been categorized into, uh, by people in the immune field, into dietary proteins, um, which is a little bit more than just allergies, dietary allergies, it's a little bit more than gluten, which is a big one. Um, lifestyle factors, um, chemicals, and then pathogens. Now, I'm answering the question here, what are the 39 triggers that you keep referring to for Hashimoto's? There's a lot more triggers for autoimmunity in general. And the key is just to figure out, not to try, well, you could, um, not to try to, 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 to uh, take an herb <coughs> or a botanical, or make every single dietary change I'm about to tell you is a trigger uh, because you'll probably go crazy, but a lot of you are gonna try to do it anyway and that's fine, because, you know, I'm good with that. So, um, so the triggers, so I'm just gonna go through them because I can't go through them, there's 39 of them if I spent, as I've just been told, one minute on each of these, people are gonna be like, so, we're just going to give you, we're just going to give you, these are the 39 triggers that are known to date in the literature and in the research that have been def definitively and definitely defined as triggers, not just to autoimmunity, but that specifically raise antibodies um, to the thyroid uh, of a Hashimoto's patient. So that, and, and here, I'm, I'm just going to read it. I'll let you see. I don't know if you can take a, whatever you do with, with computers and phones, like if you can take a screenshot of that or something like that. Here they go. So dietary proteins, gluten, everybody knows that one, sodium intake, iodine, for all you iodine lovers out there, lectins, um, lack of dietary diversity, uh, glyphosate-rich foods, pro-inflammatory diets, grains, casein, albumin, 
dietary protein cross-reactivity. Now, I'm just going to tell you, not all of you have all of those. I'm just, just for the record, not all of you have all of those. Like we use like, we use like four or five different diets, baseline diets, and then we have like 13 different um, editings, adaptations of those to the particular patients that come in. And, and they're relative to these categories of foods. Lifestyle factors, insomnia, and all of the reasons that could cause insomnia. We just, I just talked about that poor circadian rhythm, which is probably the most difficult one. Sedentary lifestyle, overtraining. Oh, we go from I shouldn't be sitting to I shouldn't be exercising too much. That's right. For the autoimmune patient, particularly for the Hashimoto's patient, that's right. Smoking, I think that goes without saying. Alcohol, for all of you who think two drinks a night is good, uh, and it does a lot of great things. It doesn't do a lot of great things for Hashimoto's patient. Drug use, lack of rest, unhealthy relationships, stress, dysglycemia, okay? Uh, blood sugar, high blood sugar, low blood sugar, prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, syndrome X, diabetes 2, uh, functional hypoglycemia, reactive hypoglycemia. Those are all blood sugar imbalances. That's what dysglycemia means. The chemicals. Um, these are things that you should probably look at across the board. Bisphenol A, many of, I'm finding most people that I'm explaining to, I'd say half the people know what that is, and it, it's a breakdown of plastics, so no plastic water bottles, those types of things. Pesticides, air pollution. Uh, we're having air pollution here right now. We're, we're, we're at this time that I'm doing this uh, segment. Uh, we are in the middle of those historic California wildfires. Reno, Reno may as well be part of it. California. I mean, we're right on the border. It, it surrounds us, and and all of the all the all the fires here. What's what's in that? Um, what's in that? The air pollution is all of the stuff that's being burned in those poor people's homes, and the and the plastics, and the rubbers, and the chemicals, and the cars that are being burned, and the gasoline, all that stuff. Air pollution, fire retardants, and what you find in a lot of the furniture, and, and you find in a lot of rugs, benzene. These are all, now there's a lot more chemicals, a lot more chemicals that I'm gonna go over than this for autoimmunity in general. Okay, this is specifically chemicals that have been shown to increase thyroid peroxidase enzymes and, um, and I think antithyroglobulin uh, uh, and, um, antibodies too, but mostly thyroid peroxidase enzymes. So benzene, Another, another plastic, I'm, I'm sorry, benzene, secondhand smoke. PCBSs, PBDEs, perchlorates, mercury. Um, so there's for you who were my age playing with mercury and thought that was cool watching it squiggle all over the place when you were a kid. Okay, notice lead's not on here, um, and which comes out really high on every single hair analysis ever done in the history of the world, it seems like, so, but, um, but, but it's which elements actually create antibodies to the thyroid, okay? And pathogens, so here, and here's where, this is, this was like from the great, um, I call it the great area of darkness in functional medicine, or more, I should say, great area of darkness in, in chronic conditions. Uh, chronic immunodeficiency diseases and fatigue and fibromyalgia, and everybody thought these people were crazy. Nobody knew what it was. There wasn't testing for it. So everybody kind of wanted the ones, you know, the one solution, you know, the one, the one uh, element solution, and it was going to be a metal, or it was going to, but but mostly, um, it, it was mostly people were assuming it was pathogens. Uh, it, 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 pathogens can be part, as you're going to see of the 39 different triggers. And here are the ones that are, are relevant to Hashimoto's. Most common, Heliobacter pylori. You would know it's H. pylori bacterial infection. It's not, that's the most common by far. Toxoplasma gondii, Yersinia enterolytica, Candida albicans. There's for all you Candida folks, so there's a lot of you out there. Okay, and that's a tough one, that's a tough one. Uh, hepatitis C, Epstein-Barr virus, for all of you who 
read the Intuitives book that says it's all Epstein-Barr virus, you'll know that it's, you'll notice that it's one of these 39 uh, um, triggers. Cytomegalovirus, uh, herpes virus six, parvovirus <laughs> from your doggy, Borrelia burgdorferi. For those of you who are familiar with that, that's the Lyme. That's the Lyme. So Lyme can be a player. Can be. There was a point in time. There's 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 doctors in this town that I've had discussions with years ago, and like everything's Lyme. Everything. Everything's Lyme. And so and and there's the Epstein, there's the everything's Epstein Barr virus, and there's the everything is. Uh, um, parasites, you'll notice I haven't mentioned parasites on here, by the way. And then there's Botox. <laughs> I saved that one for last because um, I didn't want you to get mad in the beginning for those of you who are using Botox for things other than migraines and other than like neurological problems because you use Botox for like um, migraines. I had a lady not long ago, a couple weeks ago, and we treated her a couple years ago and all of her problems had come back. Turned out that she had developed a lot of new food sensitivities. I kind of ran by her some of the new stuff we knew about Hashimoto's, and one of them was that Botox is triggering Hashimoto's, raises the antibodies against your, your thyroid with an average dose by about 70%, 70 to 75% in there. And she went into like shock, and, and she said, you know, all of this started, she had fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, she has peripheral neuropathy, massive fatigue. She, could, she was disabled, she was a nurse, she was a surgical nurse, and then she, be, she became disabled. She had all this happen, started after I got, after I started six weeks of Botox injections for my migraines. And, and, and it was just like this, you know, this awareness. So, so those are the 39 most common triggers for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Are there more? Probably. Okay, these are the ones that have been researched. These are the ones that have been confirmed to raise immune responses against your thyroid. So for all of the, what are the 39 triggers that you keep mentioning, there they are. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What is Hashimoto's? To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com.